Dr. John Gordon. I'm going to show you how this is all yeah. Just basic components of back control. Number one, hooks. Okay. Number two, after you get hooks, never cross your feet. Because this is a real big problem because you can get submitted because your feet are over one another. You can cross the feet, but not here. More on the on the chest. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a seatbelt grip. Right here. Okay. And really what I want is to understand that there's a escape side for him and then there's a actual go-to side for me. My go-to side is the side of the top arm because that's the choking arm. This arm controls him from turning because if I do this right here, nothing stops me, him from just literally turning and going right back into a closed guard. So one arm is under, one arm is over. For the choking, typically the top hand, okay? This is a seat belt because it looks like a seat belt. The next thing is that I need to know that his escape side is to push himself onto the side of this arm right here. Because this is the choking arm and he definitely doesn't want to fall onto that side. So from this side, it's much easier for him to escape as he takes the hook off and he starts turning to the left, 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 left. And from here, I have to begin to remount. Because if I don't remount, he's gonna get up and I lose the back of the position. So we have hooks. We have seatbelt. Now, the second the seatbelt comes on, he knows that this is the choking arm, so he's gonna to begin to defend his neck. That's the number one priority whenever you have your back taken is to defend your neck. I see a lot of you know students when I feed the collar and they're like sitting here with their arms flailing, defend your neck because that's the number one priority. The second thing that I need to understand is he's gonna defend his neck. So my hand is better off making the seatbelt in here because my arm is less accessible to him here. I wanna pull it here, under his armpit here. And because I know that he's gonna to wanna to fall to this side, my head pushes him to that side. And I keep tilting him to the attack side. Let's keep to the left. Because this is the side of the top arm. The other thing is actually, we'll take this one. What you don't want, I don't want to be literally pressed up against him right here. This is not a good position for me to be in. I need to have at least a little bit of space here so that my shoulders can be ahead of my hips, meaning my hips are here and shoulders are here. Because oftentimes what happens is, is that as he pushes back onto me, I can begin to redirect him towards this side right here. Right? If my hips are too close, he'll push himself literally up over me. Right on because that's no good for me here. And I'm already losing position. I, don't, I really don't have anything. I don't even have a choke. I don't have anything. So you want to have, scoop over again. So you want to have some space here. And I'll show you later why. So space, hooks. Your hooks are basically kind of extending and twisting because here I can move him without having to cross my feet. Left hand over, right hand under, right hand is the locking seatbelt and you pull the right hand into his right armpit as your head is pushing him over to the left. You'll put his hands correctly where they should be. Left, yes, yes, on the top arm, yes, yes. As I fall off right here, all right? I still keep my hooks, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to stretch him out so he can't bring his feet to his hands and I'm constantly threatening the neck and I keep the pressure pushing his head into the top arm. The next thing I want to try to do is get this hand, keep this hand, okay? As this hand was here, get here, and I want to push this down here as this hand begins to crawl up to the shoulder, his shoulder, or to my collar here. And then from here, I arch away and he taps. 
when you tap, make sure you tap like this. I know he's tapping because he's, you know, he's saving his neck, okay? So what I'm doing here is, I went from this seatbelt here. When you have this seatbelt under their arm, his right hand can't even reach my right arm. He's gonna have both hands on my choking arm right here, yes. Which enables me to get control of this arm right here and push it down here. I could even secure it here as my left hand begins to crawl up to his shoulder. I can finish it. Or I can begin to grab my own gi here. And all I'm doing is, is just squeezing my bicep and hipping it. Right. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. What you'll never see are techniques that are taught this way. Okay, guys, we're here, and you're gonna be here, and then I'm gonna go here, and you're all sitting up, because back control will never be just sitting up, because he's gonna be moving, and you're not gonna be just sitting up. So whenever it's taught like this, here, it's not very real, because he's gonna be moving. The second he makes any form of movement, he's gonna probably, you're gonna fall off to one side or another. And now, see, I just already, just naturally grabbed this hand here, so I can push that hand away, and my left hand begins to crawl up that shoulder, up that shoulder, so that my left elbow aligns with his chin, right down the center. So here, I can cut the shoulder, squeeze my bicep, and the whole time, I'm pushing his head into my bicep here. Or, if I extend my chest here, I can reach my own collar here, that's a great thing with the key. All I'm doing is just beginning to flex my bicep and can also extend my hips, which is also called kind of putting them on the rack. All right, scoop up. So what you're gonna do is you got hooks, number one, space. Seatbelt number two, left hand over, right hand under. The right hand, seatbelt to the left, and you're gonna pull it right into his right armpit. What happens here is that his hands go into the correct spot. Correct. And now I'm gonna tilt him to the left, to the choking side. My feet have to be apart because what I want to do is I want to keep his, engage. now I can engage my hips. Now from here, I can begin to control his right arm, push it down, and then this left hand crawls, crawls, crawls up, up, up. If you can, grab your own collar here. But at bare minimum, aim for that shoulder. And then control his head here as I control his arm here. Here, I'm just gonna squeeze here or your hand grabs that gi. And you're kinda gonna twist it so that it tightens it. And if I engage my hips, it'll finish the choke. You can't get the collar aimed for his shoulder? For his shoulder, yes, yes. The reason why you aim for the shoulder is because I eliminate about four steps. If I grab the collar, Okay, so sit back up. And I know you're saying, but this is gi, and uh, you have a collar. But look at what happens with the collar. So, hooks, space, seatbelt, left hand over, right hand under. Close that seatbelt right here, okay? Now, as we fall, let's say I want that collar. Now I'm here, okay? I don't have a choke. For me to finish this, I need to do this. To get a, I still don't have the choke. He's able to defend much more effectively here. So he's pulling here, maybe one hand on my hand. Yeah, right there. It's already compromising my choke. So from here, what I'll probably do is, is just roll him this way here. So I can come here, either go for that 1B or go for a bow and arrow from, not from the back. Does that make sense? Because I have a whole bunch of extra steps because it's smooth loose. Because I'm here for me to do this right here. I gotta keep tightening and tightening, and I need the proper angle. When you're here and you go from, let's just say for demonstration purposes, from here to here, it's already a choke and it's a done deal. So you eliminate literally five steps and the potential of losing. Does that make sense? So whenever you're here and you want that rear naked choke, immediately go to his shoulder and you're isolating. Even if he's got his hand still in the game, it really doesn't matter here because you have a very tight choke. 
and it comes on really quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is, go on this thing, let's see straight. Oops, and I wanna be able to kind of move his ribs this way because this is how I'm gonna be able to tilt him, okay? I'm not trying to squeeze him. I'm just trying to move left hand over, right hand under here, seat belt, and I'm gonna pull it in here on my head. So I'm just pushing him to the left, 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 this way here. My right hand gets this hand here. And as I push this down, my left hand goes right up to his shoulder here, and my head keeps pushing him in. If I need to, I'll adjust it. I got my left hand at his shoulder. I arch away and squeeze. If I can, move my head in, grab this collar here, and I twist so that now I can begin to finish that choke. And it's super tight. This hand right here, I can hold the, <coughs> the four fingers right here. Okay, or I can hold it at the palm. Because when I bend his wrist, as he tries to get the hand back, I have fairly good control of it here. If I grab his wrist right here, yeah, he extends it and then he tweaks my wrist. So I want it to be here and I want to be tweaking his wrist because if anything, I can also go here. And now it's a real problem for him. I isolate one arm and now it's two arms on one. Okay, so hooks, seatbelt left hand, Left hand over, right hand under, and you're gonna fall to the left side. Let's go one, two, three. Chris, you with it? If you could, oh, 